What's going on everybody, I'm Tones Balones and I've been speedrunning Splatoon since the first game came out in 2015. Safe to say I know a thing or two about the single player, so I figured I would do a quick breakdown of everything we saw in the most recent Nintendo Direct. Surprisingly for us, not a lot was shown about the single player in Splatoon 3, but in some ways I like it that way. It keeps the story a little bit more mysterious so we can figure it out ourselves. Let's go ahead and start with the stuff we already knew before the Direct. About two months ago, I made a video going over all of these details, so if you want more speculation, then you can go check that out later. First of all, the single player is titled Return of the Mammalians, which indicates that there is something out there to explain why everything has hair and fuzz. Squids and mammals are at opposite ends of the animal kingdom, so this has to be the work of some crazy scientist of some sort. As for characters, we see the original Agent 3 from Splatoon 1 as the captain of the Squid Beak Splatoon, alongside Callie, Marie, and Captain Cuttlefish. Technically, this could be Agent 4 from Splatoon 2, but it's more likely to be Agent 3 because they have long tentacles, whereas Splatoon 2's protagonist canonically has short tentacles. We also see DJ Octavio in a new robot mech, so we know that he will take part in the story as well. There has been no mention of Pearl or Marina yet, nor have we seen Agent 8 from Octo Expansion. The level design in Alterna is a mix between the original Hero Mode and Octo Expansion levels in Splatoon 2. Some levels require you to simply reach the end and get a Zapfish, while some levels will test specific weapons and skills to complete a task. I really like this mix because I loved both Hero Mode and Octo Expansion, so it will be nice to use all of the tools that Splatoon 3 has to offer. The overworld, that is the area you can walk around in between levels, seems to have a ton of hidden objects and items. We can see from the screenshot that there is a pack of power eggs on the snowbank, so it's likely we will also find things like drink tickets, bonus coins, and of course sunken sea scrolls on the journey as well. Lastly, we know that your partner, the little buddy, a salmonid small fry, is critical to maneuvering around the game. He has already been seen to eat through fuzz, so having your little buddy will allow you to access more areas of the game and complete other objectives. We did see more of the little buddy in action, but more on that later. Before I get into the actual meat and potatoes of what we saw in the Direct, I want to let you know that I will indeed be speedrunning this game when it comes out, so if you would like to see the content related to that in the future, then please consider subscribing and also follow my Twitch channel where I will be doing live attempts. I will be playing through the single player in a race with other members of the community day one, so we will see how that goes. Alright, on to the actual new stuff we saw from the Splatoon 3 Direct. First of all, can we please stop using the sewer grate trope? This is now the third game in the series, and also the third time in a row we've had the entrance to the single player just be a basic little sewer grate, with the exact same stickers on it. I guess the subway into Octo Expansion was cool, but where's the creativity? We get revealed that your protagonist in Splatoon 3 is Agent 3, which is weird considering this is Agent 3. It seems like the original Agent 3 from Splatoon 1 was given a promotion to Captain of the Squid Beak Splatoon, and you are the new Agent 3 as a recruit. Callie and Marie are also here and are labeled as Agent 1 and Agent 2, so that's the same as it was before. The first couple cutscenes were actually the exact same clips we've already seen from previous directs, just showing a couple of hairy octarians or mammalians and some of the environment in Alterna. Now we see the first clip of new gameplay and there's a lot to take in. First of all, we have a new model of Hero Shot. It seems to shoot fairly similarly to the regular level 2 Hero Shot from Splatoon 2. Hopefully this is the base model so it doesn't require an upgrade. Next we see that the sub weapon is actually the little buddy, which means it will be used in some levels as a sub weapon. Also the small fry is found on the d-pad, which means it can be swapped for other weapons such as curling bombs or splat bombs. It's most likely you will see these upgrades later because you can still collect power eggs as you can see in the top right. The last thing I'll point out in the screen is the fact that your special weapon charges up over time, which is a major change from previous games. Before, you would have to grab the special from a tin, but now the special will go up by dealing damage or inking turf. In the next scene, you have a different special weapon, which I believe is the Trizuka. Maybe this is a level-based thing, or maybe you can decide before you enter the level. You're also using a Hero Blaster with a Burst Bomb as a sub-weapon, but this time you do not have your little buddy with you at all. As you can see, normally the little buddy is in your ink tank, but now it's just not there. In fact, you have a completely different ink tank altogether. There isn't even a d-pad to change your sub-weapon. Agent 3 also had lives in the top left, which did not exist in the level before. Because of how different these levels are, I think it's a completely different region of the single player. Maybe there will be some levels where you can use traditional upgrades and sub-weapons, and a different section much like the subway from Octo Expansion where you are given your loadout and may not use your little buddy at all. This gets even more strange in the next level because this time you do have the small fry, 
but not only that, you only have the small fry. This is clearly an Octo Expansion inspired level since it has no main weapon and only one sub weapon that you can use. Also, the ending is a data point like in Octo Expansion and not a Zapfish like in Splatoon 2 Hero Mode. Same deal with this level with the balloons, the ending is clearly a data point and you are given a squiffer and a burst bomb with no way of changing it. I find it interesting that neither of the previous two levels had a special weapon at all. Same goes with the next level with the ink brush, which actually looks like a tricky level that has a tight timer. We also see a level where the zipcaster is a required weapon to progress, which usually we do not see. There are some times in Octo Expansion where they simply give you a baller or an inkjet from the start, but never do they give you a weapon first and then require to use a special weapon to progress. They're usually more like the next clip where they just give you a crab tank and nothing else. The next two levels shown are fairly standard, one uses the stringer weapon while the other is just simply swimming to the end of a missile filled obstacle course. We can't really see the ending on these levels, but they also do not have the d-pad to swap weapons. Here you will see that the start of this level is clearly a turnstile from Octo Expansion, just with a new look. They probably just wanted to reuse the same kind of credit entry mechanic, though maybe it doesn't cost credits to play and they just wanted to reuse the asset. Also, this level is a boss fight, as you can see from the ring. The only other thing left to talk about is this weird school of fish that show up on the scaffolding of the oil rig or rocket launch pad or whatever this is. We don't really know what kind of role these fish play, but it's safe to assume they're bad guys. It might also be some kind of megalith boss fight where they form a large school of fish like in Finding Nemo and use that to attack you, but we'll have to wait and see. Finally, there is the scene where you're dragged into some kind of hole, and I think this is very close to the beginning of the game, otherwise they wouldn't show it in a trailer. I want to say this hole is where the second segment of levels are found, the one where you are given weapons like an Octo Expansion. So above ground you enter levels that are traditional like Splatoon 2 Hero Mode, and below ground you will find the Octo Expansion style levels. As for the actual story of these locations, we have no idea, so just have to wait to play the game when it comes out. Phew, that was quite a bit to talk about, analysis is hard. I really wish there was more to analyze, but in all honesty the single player rarely is the selling point for Splatoon games, so I understand why it was a short segment in the direct. I'm sure they would rather appeal to the game modes that most people will be playing. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and feel free to comment below anything I missed or that you would like to see. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.